Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, so I got a comment on yesterday's video from Tony asking kind of where I got kind of all my experience uh, doing home repairs and doing stuff in the garden and all that. I didn't really know what I was going to talk about today, so, so that seemed like a good place to start. The truth is, I don't really have any formal training in any of this stuff. Uh, I've just kind of uh, picked it up as I went along, you know, kind of learned it, my, learned it on my own. I'll admit I watch an appalling number of uh, home improvement type shows. And I learned a lot from that, and the rest of it just kind of was trial and error. You just do what, what you do, what looks right, and, and then figure out where the mistakes are from that. But let's dive a little bit into who I am a little bit. Over at Disney, I, I worked in the parades department as a float driver. Uh, I was primarily over on the California Adventure side, so most of most of my parades were on that side. Primarily, I did uh, for those of you who are familiar with the parades. I worked uh, Pixar Play Parade for its entire life over at California Adventure. Um, I did some side shows like uh, Viva Navidad and the Phineas and Fur Rockin' and Rollin' Dance Party. Um, I did the uh, Disney's Electrical Parade when it was at uh, California Adventure and also a little bit when it was back over at Disneyland side. I've worked uh, on the uh, Sensational uh, Parade a little bit on Disney side. I worked Fantasmic if you've ever seen that. Uh, and like I said, I was primarily a float driver. So I'm going to just kind of pull up some pictures or videos of different floats I've driven just because I thought that would be kind of interesting. On the Pixar Play Parade, um, there was a float dedicated to the Monsters, Inc. movie, both Monsters, Inc. 1 and 2. Uh, it was you know, the same float was kind of changed a little bit when they went to Monsters, uh, I think it was Monsters University was the second one. Um, I worked the, uh, I drove the um, Incredibles float, we called it the Omnidroid float. I drove the Finding Nemo float. Uh, the Bugs Life float, I drove the Buzz Lightyear float, the uh, dump truck from Toy Story 3, I believe it was, the what we call the toy wagon float, which was also from Toy Story, um, and I drove both Lightning and Mater from the Cars movies. Uh, when I was working Fantasmic, I was primarily backstage crew, but towards the end I uh, I drove uh, the eels from the Little Mermaid movie. There was a section in the show where the two eels from the Little Mermaid movie did a pass during kind of one of the darker parts of the, of the show. Um, I drove both Flotsam and Jetsam. Um, that was a lot of fun. Actually, that was the most fun I ever had, uh, is driving those things. It was, it was also the hardest work uh, of any show I ever did, but it was definitely worth it. A lot of great experiences there. Um, and of course, uh, I worked the Phineas and Ferb rockin' and rollin' dance party for, for all the last three or so years that it was in, uh, that it was running, that that show was running. Um, I drove the Viva Navidad float every year. Um, I also did something called a tow position. Uh, Toe is a person who's already trained on all the floats, who's basically outside the float, giving instructions to the driver inside the float, because oftentimes those floats just have really, really horrible visibility. So you need somebody outside just to make sure you know people are out of the way, make sure there aren't any obstacles, nothing that's going to get run into. Don't want to do that. Um, I also worked, like I said, electrical parade. Uh, I drove about half the floats there including what the, the pirate ship, the, let's see, can you remember, the, the drum, what we call drum and train, which was at the beginning of the parade that was driven normally on the parade by Goofy. Uh, but, you know, yeah, you, you normally, uh, you have to, you know, you have to be a certain size to play Goofy. And Goofy is one of the characters that I'm big enough to fit in the costume. I fit within the, uh, the size range for that. Basically, I'm a big guy, so, the only characters I would have been able to do are the very large characters. So that's like Sully from Monsters, Inc., that's Beast from Beauty and the Beast, it's Goofy. Um, I could probably do Darth Vader, I'm big enough for that. 
Uh, but you know, they're never going to put someone like me in, in a Mickey Mouse costume. I'm just, you know, you, Mickey Mouse, you don't want a Mickey Mouse that towers over the children. We want, we want the kids to love Mickey Mouse, not to be afraid of him. So, as, as I think I mentioned earlier, I didn't get a whole lot of hours at Disney because the parades I, I normally did were, um, you know, single parades. We did a single parade a day and you didn't get an eight hour shift for that. That was usually a four or five hour shift. Um, so in order to augment hours, I would come in and do what they call bringovers on Disneyland side. One of the problems you ran into with Disneyland is it was never designed with parades in mind. So there's no way to get the floats from one end of the park to the other end of the park driving backstage. So if you want to, if you want to, you know, keep the floats in the warehouse where they're normally stored, you had two choices. You either did two parades a day, one from the back of the park to the front of the park, and then a second one from the front of the park to the back of the park, or you did one parade and you did what they call a bring over or a bring back. And basically what that was is you came in after work hours when the park is closed and you literally drove the float through the, uh, through, the, through the park while the park was closed. Because obviously you can't drive it through the park, you know, unless you're gonna do a full parade uh, while there's people in the park. Um, over on California Adventure, I also worked a parade called Paint the Night, which was kind of an updated version of Disney's Electrical Parade, and I drove basically just about everything. In fact, I, w I was signed off on every float but one, and it just, they ran out of time before they got me signed off. So um, I drove the Mac float uh, from Cars Movies, I drove uh, the, the Slinky Dog float, which is from Toy, uh, Toy Story. Um, we had a little mermaid float we called Triton. I drove that. I drove what they called the Princess float, uh, which is literally the biggest float I've ever driven in my life. Uh, so that was really what I did over at Disneyland. Uh, not, not anything involving gardening or electrical or anything like that. Although I was always very interested in uh, and the electronics and the floats. So I kind of became friends with some of the engineers over there whose job it was to repair and maintain the floats. And so I did learn a lot about how the floats work. And in many cases, I knew more about the floats than some of the people that worked on them. You know, you tend to uh, learn more about something when you operate it on a daily basis than when you, you know, work on it from outside on a periodic basis. So there were a lot of times where, you know, the the, the technicians would come to me and ask me something about the float because, you know, it's easier to ask somebody that knows than to try and stumble along blindly and figure it out. I'll never, I'll never say that I didn't have a good time at Disney. The big problem I had at Disney is just the, the, the entire management team came out of the performer end of things. And unfortunately, the, since the name of my department was called Parade Support, they you know, anyone who's a performer always kind of looked down on parade support. We were their assistants and, and just kind of peons in their eyes. And unfortunately, when you have a whole management that comes out of that mentality, that mentality kind of permeates its way into the management style. And so the managers never really saw any value in anybody that wasn't a performer because that's all they really identified with. And so the people that got promoted were the people who had the really outgoing, bubbly personalities, or who were friends of the right people. And, you know, it was always based more on personality than qualifications. I should have easily been able to be a manager in that department. I have way more management experience than probably any of the other managers that are actually in the department. Um, I had legitimate ideas on how to fix things, but I could never get anyone to listen to me because I was always dismissed because, hey, you know, he's just prayed support. Uh, that was always one of the big problems I saw with the department is that it seemed to me that they suffered from a crippling lack of diversity. And I'm not talking gender diversity or racial diversity or any of that. I'm talking about actual diversity of experience. When you have an entire management team that comes out of one small part of the department, you know, you're not going to be able to... to represent everyone else because you don't know anything about that. You know, a manager who was a performer is never going to be able to adequately uh, comprehend 
technical suggestions because that's just not their expertise. What the department really need to do is bring in a high level manager from some of the other disciplines within the parades department like uh, the costuming or, or the maintenance people or parade support, you know, because we have something to contribute. We know a lot. We've done a lot of things over there. We, we, know, we know a lot. We've done a lot of things in there. We know parts of that parade that the managers won't ever know. Uh, I think the man. I think the. I think the company is starting to figure that out because about a year or two ago, they assigned one of the performer managers to be the parade support representative manager, and I mean I, I think they chose the best person they could choose from the limited talent pool they had, but this person still was not a good person for the job because. He, since he came from that performer mentality, he looked at the world through the eyes of a, of a performer. And since he never really comprehended any of the uh, any of the other parts of it, he was never going to be able to adequately represent the people in the parade sport or any of the other uh, disciplines within the parades department. Uh, and that just it just got to the point where I kept trying over and over and over again to. Uh, you know, get promoted just to a lead, not even to management, but just to lead. You know, I had no interest in being a performer lead. I wanted to be a parade support lead. I could have done that. You know, I could have done the job just as well and probably better than some of the people they chose because once again, the people that did promote were the people who had, who were friends with the right people. You know, it was based more on personality, like I said, than actual qualifications. And when that's what you're dealing with, when that's the sole thing you're focusing on, you're not going to really get the most quality people. And ultimately, that was why I ended up leaving the company. Uh, the best way I could describe it was that the parades department management was like the world's largest cheerleader clique, where, you know, if you're friends with the right people, you'll make it. And if you don't, you don't. So that's what I have for you today. Um, I think I'll do a little bit more diving into who I am maybe on tomorrow's vlog because that was actually a good idea for subject matter. And uh, so that's what I have for now. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you tomorrow on Escaping the Mouse. Good night. Oh, that's right, I promised you a little bite and nibble footage today. So here you go.